hello? Who, who is this? Hi, my name is Michelle Clark, and I'm calling on behalf of the Chicago Department of Health. Is this Racine Rockwell? How did you get this number? I'm calling on a personal matter. Um, before I can answer any of your questions, I need to verify you are Racine Rockwell. How do I know that you're not trying to scam me? I, I understand your concern, um, but this is critical. We both have to trust each other here. I, mean, I can wait while you call the health department. What did you say your name was again? Michelle Clark. <sighs> okay, what do you want? Am I speaking with Racine Rockwell? Yeah. Can I please, can you please tell me your birth date? Um, my information says that you were born in April. April 4th, 1986. Thank you. And can you verify your address, please? No, no, I can't. I, um, I, I have your address on North Spalding in Chicago. Is that correct? 1403 North Spalding, that's my mother's address. Is that your address? <sighs> sure. So now that we have established you are who you are, it is my job to inform you in the past few weeks, someone you have come into close contact with has tested positive for COVID-19. COVID-19, is my mother okay? Oh, I I'm sorry, Racine, but I, I can't say. Our contacts are confidential. You told me that you would answer my questions. Well, I can only answer questions about your health situation, which, by the way, um, whatever you tell me is also kept confidential. But you did talk to my mother. Don't you live with her? Uh, yeah, I, I. but I've been staying with a friend. Well, you could give your mother a call. Right. So what do I have to do now with this COVID thing? We need you to self-quarantine for 14 days. Um, do you feel sick? No. Oh, good. Now, I need the names and contact information for everyone you've had close contact with in the past few weeks. <laughs> you expect me to give you other people's information. I can't do that. I, I understand how you feel, Racine, but you know, these people could get very ill and pass it along to others. Look, Michelle, you don't understand anything. I, I, I don't want to alarm you. You know, most people get mild or no symptoms at all, but others will have a hard time depending on their overall health and, and age. Like my mother. Hold on. What? No, no I'm just, I'm on the phone. I'm, I'm watching a video. Is everything okay? I, I have to go. Was that your friend? Sure, yeah. We really should have that person's information. I'll keep an eye on her. Your friend needs to quarantine. I should talk to her. I'm worried about my mother. You can call your mother when we're done here. Right. Where else have you been in the last week? I've just been here. You didn't go to the store or go out to send a package, any place like that last week? Look, I know where I've been. Has anyone been there to see you? Any visitors that we should contact? Look, I gotta go. Wait, wait what, what about your friend? I, I promise, she will never know about you. Shonda. Excuse me? Her name is Shonda Knox. What seems to be the problem? Racine asked about her mother.
And what did you say? I told her I was not allowed to discuss our other contacts with anyone. That's right, Michelle. All contact information must remain confidential. What else? It wasn't easy getting information out of her, but, but I did get one name. Well, we need to find as many contacts as possible to stop the spread. Remember your training. Right. I have my it's right here. Well, feel free to reach out to me anytime. That's what I'm here for. Oh, I, I've got another call. Talk to you later. Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs> Confidentiality? You? You've never kept a secret in your life. Okay, please don't do that. Do what? Eavesdrop on my conversations. Listen, I was just walking by. If you don't want somebody to hear, close your door. What door? Shh. Why are you shushing me? I think I heard the downstairs neighbor come in. So? I think she's a prostitute. A prostitute? Or a drug dealer. I mean, there's been a lot of strange people coming and going. Four art students live downstairs. Oh, well, that explains it. Oh my God, you are something else. Well, who are you talking to just my now? My supervisor. I started my new job today. Oh, fantastic. We can quit worrying about the spread. Yeah, now I can just worry about keeping the job. Yeah, you do suck at confidentiality. I do not. Uh, remember the time we were at the bar and you blurted out, Lisa got a phone job. And Lisa was sitting right there. Well, I thought she left. Well, I told you that in confidence. Well, I had a little too much to drink, mm -hmm. and you didn't exactly keep that little tidbit to yourself. Uh-huh, and what about the Yeah, yeah, okay, 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 I've slipped up a few times. People change, right? Good luck. Whoa. What's the matter? A little too much mm -hmm. celebration last night? Yeah, but I don't <laughs> care because it's not every day I make detectives. Yeah, now you can hang up that patrolman's uniform and pretend to be somebody. Yeah, you're so funny. Hey, you know I'm proud of you. Well, anytime you want me to, you know, practice my interrogation techniques on those sick people, you just let me know. Thanks, bud, but... I'll do my job, you do yours. Oh shit, my job. I gotta get ready, I got a stakeout tonight. Go get him, Sherlock. Okay, okay, Michelle. <sighs> Time for another call. Starla here. Oh, I'm sorry. I was calling Ashonda Knox. Who's this? Um, I need to speak to Shonda Knox. Is she there? This is Shonda. Who are you? You said your name was Starla. Um, some people call me Starla. Okay, well, I will have to verify that you are Shonda Knox. I understand your birthday is in November. Can you tell me the day and the year? How did you get my name? Is November correct? Yeah, November 5th, 1990. Is your address 601 West Montrose, Chicago, Illinois? For now. My name is Michelle Clark from the Chicago Department of Health. You have been in close contact with someone who has been exposed to COVID-19. This can't be happening. I understand it's a lot to take in. Well, who told you to call me on this phone? I'm sorry, but I'm not allowed to divulge that information. But we can talk about your health. How have you been feeling lately? Like crap. I have this sore throat I can't seem to shake, and all I want to do is sleep. Any other symptoms? A cough? Congestion? No. You don't think I have this COVID thing. I can't say, I, I'm not a doctor, but you should self-quarantine for at least 14 days, just in case. Like not see anyone for 14 days? What if I have to see people for work? Okay, you definitely should not go to work. I tell that to my boss. If you're infected, you will pass the virus on to others. What did I do to deserve this? Do you have a fever? <laughs> 
I don't know. I, I don't think so. You should take your temperature. <laughs> yeah, if I find a thermometer in this room, I'll let you know. Maybe you could have someone pick one up for you? <sighs> yeah, right. If you need help with errands or food or other things, I can give you the contact information for agencies that will help you. I'll figure it out. I need the names of anyone you've come into contact with in the past week. I don't know anybody's name. I have to get off this call. Wait, how about your boss? <laughs> yeah, right. If Carla ever founds out, all hell will break loose. Okay, and what's her last name? Carla? Shit. Shonda, she will never find out who gave me her information. What do I care if she gets the disease? I hope she rots in hell. Uh, I can see that your relationship with your boss is a little strained. But you should care that she might pass it on to others. I swear, if she finds out it was me and I'm still here, I'll come find you. No worries, really. Her name is Carla Laporte. And what is her dress? Who the hell knows where she lives? Some fancy boat picks her up. A boat? That's all you're getting out of me. I have to go. Oh, wait, wait, what about a telephone number? I know you're frustrated, Michelle, but you can only do so much, right? Try not to let it get to you. Are people always so resistant? Of course. Some people are suspicious and have trust issues. Do you blame them? I guess not. What did you say Mrs. Knox's address was? Um, 601 West Montrose in Chicago. No unit number? No, ma'am. That's Montrose Harbor. Montrose Harbor? Shonda did mention a boat. Some people lie for whatever reason. Next time you call, try to get her real address. Will do. That's all I ask. Oh, I am late for a meeting. Talk later. Michelle? Hi, Mrs. Rockwell. How are you doing today? Have you talked to Racine? I'm not at liberty to say, but you can always call anyone and ask them directly. Okay, I'll, I'll guess I try it later. So, how are you feeling? My symptoms are gone. Excellent! And, and have you been quarantining? Yes. Thank you. We need you to stay in a few more days to ensure that your fever doesn't come back. Listen, I know you can't tell me if you talk to my daughter, but I am very concerned. Why are you concerned? Desaparecida. She disappeared from the face of the earth. Her friends haven't seen her and she hasn't been at work. You know, Racine has always been a little loquita, but it has to be something really bad for her not to call. When was the last time you spoke? A week ago. She left home. I know. Uh, she called me a few days later. She told me she was staying with friends. She lost her phone and gave me a new number. Okay, try not to worry too much. You two will probably connect with each other soon. I hope so. Are you out of your mind? Keep your voice down. Nobody can hear us. Where's Carla? She won't be back until later. Thank God. Why did you tell her about me? I had to give that health department lady something. She kept asking me all these questions. Well, how did she get your number? Probably from my mother. You called your mother? I didn't want her to worry and call the police. Well, I gave that health department lady the lowdown on Carla. And you think I'm the crazy one? Just her phone number. 
Carl will never know it was me. God, I hope you're right. Or you can say goodbye to that husband and kid of yours. Racine, don't say that. <sighs> Sorry. God, my poor mother. Look, Carla knows a lot of people. She'll never think it was us. I hope you're right. No, Michelle, absolutely not. But the poor woman, she is so worried about her daughter. We are not allowed to tell our cases about other conversations we've had with their contacts. But... No buts. Okay. Is there anything else you need to discuss? No, I'm good. Talk later. Bye. <laughs> Whoa, that sounded ugly. Don't worry about it. Okay, well, can I be of any of assistance? You can't. Okay, don't get bitchy. I was just trying to help. Well, you're not. Well, hey, let me tell you about what happened at work today. We caught this guy running around Lincoln Square in a Trump mask and he's flashing women. Save it, Lauren. Okay, I really don't care right now. Okay. I will talk to you later then. Is this Carla Laporte? Who is this? Miss Laporte, I'm Michelle Clark with the Chicago Department of Health. How did you get this number? I understand my calling you is highly irregular, but very serious. Mm, serious? How serious? I need to verify you are, in fact, Carla Laporte. Could I please have your date of birth? Oh, look, if you're trying to steal my identity, I can't blame you. But I'm not that stupid. No, ma'am. I will give you the number to the health department and they will verify who I am and the legitimacy of this call. Again, my name is Michelle Clark. Okay, I'll bite. Why are you calling me? Could you please confirm your birth date? You were born in January, correct? January 7th, 1982. And what's your address? <laughs> we need this information to identify you for follow-up phone conversations. Oh my God. 800 North Michigan, Suite 6803, Chicago. Thank you. I know this is a lot to take in and I will try and make it as easy on you as possible. The reason for my call, a person you've been in close contact with may have been exposed to coronavirus. You're joking. I am not. To stop the spread, we will need you to quarantine for at least 14 days. Oh, 14 days, that is impossible. <laughs> you wouldn't want to infect others, would you? You're asking too much. I also, need you to give me the information and names of others that you have had close contact with in the past week or two. The people I work with are very private. I am confident they would never forgive me. They got a call from the health department. <laughs> Can you imagine? Don't you think they have the right to know they may have COVID-19? Yeah, I will tell them myself. Okay, the fastest way to lose friends is to admit you gave them a virus. Now, if we call, your contacts will never know how we obtain their information. It's all confidential. Hmm, good point. Let's start with the people closest to you. Well, I live with Wes Claremont. I'm sure you've heard of him. Chicago's amazing Wes Claremont. Day cruising on Claremont's yacht the beautiful, guilty pleasure. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm going to be bringing some clients by in about an hour. Be ready. Okay. What the hell's wrong with you? Nothing. <clears throat> Drank water, wrong pipe. We better get your fucking act together by the time our guests arrive, understand? No problem. Listen, 
sooner or later, when you decide to accept your fate, you'll find out Wes isn't so bad. We'll get you off this boat, maybe place you somewhere exotic. Wes will take care of you. Your life doesn't seem so exotic. Never mind about my life. Someday you'll move on. They all do. I want to see my family. Be a shame if that daughter of yours disappeared. Your husband would be devastated. Please don't hurt her. I'll do what you want me to do. Hey, Rumi. Hey, Lauren. I'm sorry. I was so bitchy the other day. That's okay. It's all right. Something going on? Do you want to talk about that? No. I'm okay. What? Well, I thought we could celebrate on your jobs. Tequila? Uh -huh. You didn't have enough celebration the other oh. night. Yeah, but this time it's just you <laughs> and me. You know, we used to get hammered when I first moved in. Yeah, those were the days. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was just starting my new job, fresh off college. And I needed a place to stay. Yeah, and I needed to save some money on the rent. So luckily it worked out for both of us. Oh, yeah, and your ex-husband was still stalking you at that point. So don't even mention that, SOB, okay? I spent way too many years taking his abuse. Okay. Well, he didn't want to let you go, that is for sure. Yeah, well, as soon as he found out that my new roommate was a cop, he took his gaslight right on down the road. And now he is just... A distant nightmare. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Remember that funny looking guy you were dating? Funny looking guy? Yeah. Yeah. Clyde? Clyde! Yeah! Oh, 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 he had that long face. <laughs> oh, your friends loved him. Clyde did. Not to my face, they did it. <laughs> yeah, well, they were afraid it would hurt your feelings. <gasps> oh, <laughs> Clyde, he was so sweet. Though he did have mm. quite the prominent <laughs> jawline. <laughs> What's worse, I think his middle name was Dale. <laughs> <laughs> what was his mother thinking? I really don't know. Ooh. Oh my god. Oh. Well, anyway. You have been like a sister I've never had. You have been a really good friend. To Clyde? Oh, to Clyde. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh man, you never could hold your liquor. Hi, Racine. How are you doing today? Did you talk to my mother? Why haven't you called her? <sighs> because I know she's probably not too happy with me, and I, I just really don't want to hear it right now. I know what you mean. 
I don't like to call my mom when she's mad at me. So are you showing any signs of the virus today? No, but I, I'm really worried about Shonda. She coughed all night. I'll check in with her next. Have you been around anybody else since the last time that we talked? Why do you keep asking me that? I'm just doing my job. No, I haven't. Just, can you check on Shonda? Doing it now. I'll talk to you later. <sighs> no one said it was going to be easy. <laughs> Hi, Shonda. How are you today? <laughs> How do I sound? <laughs> Your symptoms. <coughs> it's fucking cough. It won't stop. <coughs> I'm having trouble breathing and I can't get warm. Do you have a fever? I'm fuck what I know. Okay. <coughs> hey, are you having chest pains? <laughs> when I inhale. <laughs> <laughs> this COVID shit's trying to take me down. I know it is. Shonda, you need to call a doctor. What doctor? C can you get to an emergency room? <laughs> no. Look, you need help. Your symptoms have progressed to the point that if you don't get some kind of medical intervention, <laughs> To alarm you, but there could be dire consequences. <laughs> I'm gonna die in this room. I just know it. <laughs> Call an ambulance. No, <laughs> it won't help me either. I, I don't know why you say that, but but let me give you the contact information of a doctor, an online doctor who you can talk to without even leaving your apartment. Okay. <laughs> Shonda. Shonda, calm yourself down. Okay, I know this is hard, but try stay focused. Breathe. Breathe. Detective Kent, missing persons. Hey, this is Detective Sedgwick with the 19th Precinct. I'm working on a hunch I have, and I was wondering if you could help me. What can I do for you? Yeah, uh, I need a copy of a missing persons report from uh, June 18, 2010. Okay. Young woman, Rebecca Davis, uh, was reported missing by her boyfriend. Here it is. <laughs> oh, I remember that case. Davis claimed she was kidnapped by that rich guy, Wes Claremont. It was a big to-do. Now, that woman had a screw loose, if you ask me. Her complaint said Claremont kidnapped and sexually assaulted her. Yeah, the whole incident didn't make any sense. Wes Claremont could buy any woman he wanted. Why would he kidnap someone? Is that what he told you? More or less. And I guess Wes was telling the truth, because it turns out Davis eventually dropped the complaint. You and Claremont on a first-name basis, are you? I got to know him pretty well. He brought some cigars down for all of us in the department. Nice guy. Do you know how I can get a hold of her? Sadly, she drowned in the lake shortly after filing the incident. Suicide, I hear. Really? Like I said, a screw loose. Anything else I can do for you? Yeah. Can you please send me a copy of that file? And oh, one more thing. Have you any missing persons reports in the last two weeks around the Uptown area, maybe close to Montrose Harbor? I'll have to check. I'm up to my eyeballs of missing people. You know what? Let me call you back. Michelle, calm down. There's only so much we can do as contact tracers. I get that. But this woman is seriously ill, and I'm afraid for her. You gave her the phone number to call the doctor, correct? I did, I, but I don't think she's going to reach out. I will see if the virtual healthcare service has heard from her. 
but she has to be the one to initiate the call. We can't force her. But what if someone is stopping her? Like a domestic abuse situation? That's how it feels to me. I've seen this kind of behavior before. It sounds like Shonda's situation is triggering you for some reason. I'm just frustrated. All we can do is work the case and see if you can get her to call. Right. Keep me posted. Hi, Carla. This is Michelle with the Chicago Department of Health. How are you this evening? I'm busy. What do you want? Your situation has changed. You are now in a high-risk scenario as someone that you have come into contact with is very ill. Who? You know I can't say, but I am wondering, how are you feeling? Any symptoms associated with COVID-19? No. Can I go now? Have you been in contact with anyone in the past 24 hours displaying these symptoms? No. If you do come into contact, you should stay far away and encourage the infected person to get medical treatment. Wait, who is this person? I cannot divulge that information. But this call is bullshit. You can't call me up, get me all freaked out, and then refuse to answer my questions. I don't want to freak you out but you need to understand the risks. I think you're a fucking alarmist. Look, this situation is dire, Miss Laporte. Please stay quarantined 14 days after contact. Look, Clark, if I find out you're fucking with me in any way, you will live to regret this phone call. Look, I am just doing my job, Miss Laporte. <laughs> little testy. Hello. Baby. Hello. Hi. Uh, hi. Hey, is this the Montrose Harbor Dock Master? Speaking. My name's Detective Sedgwick with the Chicago PD, and I'm wondering if I can ask you a few questions in regards to a yacht called the Guilty Pleasure. It's owned by Mr. Wesley Claremont. Uh, just so you know, I can't give out any personal information about our guests. No, no, that's not a problem. Um, Mr. Claremont filed a police report about a few missing items on the yacht. I'm just following up. Funny, Wes didn't mention anything to me. Oh, well, you, you know how busy he is. He doesn't think I took anything, does he? That girlfriend of his doesn't like me much. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if she's trying to set me up or something. Girlfriend? Yeah. He didn't mention a girlfriend. What's her name? Carla Laporte. Hmm. She has a very high opinion of herself, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. I hate people like that. Me too. <laughs> Let me give you a little advice. It's been my experience that the people who cooperate the most look the most innocent. I get your drift. Good. So is the yacht docked now? Uh, nope. That is a negatory. Well, do you know who might have been coming and going for the last couple of weeks? Uh, when I came to work one day last week, the boat was already out. And I guess a few days later, Carla and some of her business associates took the speedboat I assumed they met the yacht. I don't know. Uh, who's piloting the boat? Sorry, bear with me a second here. Diving into the depths of the documents, Detective. Uh, uh, according to their float plan, Captain Jack's on board. Captain Jack? His name's Jack Sheridan. Uh, Weston mentioned him to you? Oh, yeah, I got him right here. Um, he's on my list. You just threw me when you called him Captain Jack. Um, the two men who were on the boat, who were they? Uh, hell if I know. Business types, you know? I mean, rich guys. I doubt they would steal anything. Right. Do you mind if I come by later and look at your security footage? Uh, well, I'll have to check with management, but that shouldn't be a problem. And do you have any, any idea of when the boat might be docked? Uh, you got me. 
And sometimes the guilty pleasure stays out on the lake for a long time if the weather permits, and uh, she's a permitting, so yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for that information. And there's no need to talk to Mr. Claremont about our conversation. I will let him know how cooperative you were. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, hey, you wouldn't happen to have the number for Sheridan and Ms. Laporte, would you? I would just hate to bother Mr. Claremont. He's just so busy. Right. Well, uh, I'll just give those to you when you come by. Later. Later. Jack Sheridan. Hello, my name is Michelle Clark. I'm with the Chicago Department of Health. Am I talking to Mr. Jack Sheridan? What is Shonda doing? How should I know? I tried calling her, she's not answering. Maybe, maybe she's asleep. Oh, which one of you called the fucking health department? <laughs> the health department? Oh, don't be a smart ass, it had to be one of you. If I was gonna call anybody, it would be the police. Listen, bitch, do you think the police would ever take your word over mine? Do you remember what happened to the last piece of shit who tried to call the cops on West Claremont? And maybe I should send some of my men over to your mother's house. See how she's doing? It wasn't me. Well, since I can't trust either of you, I'll be replacing your phone when the boat docks tomorrow. <sighs> Shonda! Shonda! <sighs> Shit. Racine's phone's disconnected? <gasps> Shonda. Hello, this is Michelle Clark with the Chicago Department of Health. Am I speaking to Carla Laporte? Up yours, Clark. You know it's me. Just to be sure, what is your date of birth? Look, I have had it with your games. If you continue to mess in my business, I will uh, come... Wait, hold it right there, Miss Laporte. Now, it sounds to me like you're threatening me. And although I have to keep your health situation private, I can file a complaint with the police if I feel that bodily harm may come to me or to my family. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, please don't misunderstand me. It's just that I heard you made a call to Jack Sheridan and now he's quit and left me in a little bit of a bind. So needless to say, I am a little bit upset. I am sorry you're upset. But know that no matter what happens, it is not personal. I am just doing my job. Okay. What do you want? I am checking in with you. Have you been staying quarantined? Have you been near anyone showing signs of COVID or had any symptoms yourself? 
no, no, and no. Can I go now? Of course. God, oh God, I hope they're okay. Let them be okay. Hey there, Sedgwick. Ah, Kent, what can I do you for? It's what I can do for you. Hmm. I have a particularly weird missing persons report here. A Miss Shonda Knox went missing about two weeks ago. From where? Her husband said she left to take a walk down by the lake just south of Montrose Harbor. She never came back. Shonda Knox? Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. I think this could be related. Another woman, Racine Rockwell, just reported missing last night by her mother. Racine works in the uptown area. Hey, can you send me both those reports, please? Oh, one more thing. Racine Rockwell's mother said she thinks her daughter may have the coronavirus. So be careful. Awesome. Why is that awesome? Oh, it just is. I don't know, Tammy. I just feel like such a failure. No, it is not your fault, Michelle. I do find it curious that both Shonda and Racine's phones are disconnected. I know, right? I told you something strange was going on. Shonda is so sick. I'm afraid for her. Do you want to file a police report on Carla Laporte? We can, you know. Not right now. I just feel like it would be throwing fuel on a fire. Okay. Be careful. I will. Talk to you later. Laporte, please. Who are you? Ms. Laporte, I'm Detective Sedgwick with the Chicago PD. If this is about threatening that health department lady, I didn't mean it. I'm just I'm, I'm under a lot of stress lately. No, um, this is about another matter. But you better watch who you're threatening. I understand you're the caretaker of a yacht called the Guilty Pleasure, uh, owned by a Mr. Wes Claremont, is this correct? What about it? Do you recall boarding the guilty pleasure with two women, uh, a Racine Rockwell and a Shonda Knox at Montrose Harbor at 10.30 p.m. on the 24th? Oh, you must have me mistaken for someone else. You know, the harbor security footage is surprisingly sharp. Would you like to meet me down there and we can take a look together? Yes, okay, it was me. So what? Boarding a boat at night is not a crime. Well, as far as I can tell, Miss Laporte, you were the last person to see these two women. And as far as I can tell, they are still on that yacht. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Both those women left me that night and I haven't seen them since. Well, I'm sorry, but we are going to have to search the yacht. Now I understand it is docked right now. I don't really know. And if you'll excuse me, I don't have time for this nonsense if you don't have a warrant. Now that's going to be two police officers with my warrant to escort you down to the boat. If you don't mind. I better go get the door. Hi, Mrs. Rockwell. How are you doing today? I am beside myself with worry. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Is there anything I can do? I doubt it, honey. I filed a missing person report for Racine. I'm so scared something terrible has happened to her. Oh, my. <laughs> Don't cry. I, I heard the longer someone is missing, the less chance they have of finding them. 
Do you have someone there with you? Yes, my niece is here until we hear something. If you don't mind, Michelle, you know what? I'm afraid I'm uh, if I'm if I'm on the line, I'm gonna miss Racine's call. So, can... oh, of course. No, I'll I'll check in with you later. Okay. Hey! Hey! What's the matter with you? I stuck at my job. Oh, I'm sure you don't. Oh, I get too emotionally involved. I worry about people. It stresses me out. That's why you're good at your <sighs> job. Whatever. <laughs> and why are you so chipper? I solved my first case today. Oh, really? Did you arrest the downstairs neighbor for prostitution? No. I arrested a perp by the name of Wesley Claremont and his girlfriend, Carla Laporte. What? Yeah, it turns out for years, Claremont, by the help of Laporte, had been imprisoning women on their yacht to entertain their out-of-town gentlemen clients. Did you find any women on that boat? Yeah, let me see. Yeah, uh, uh, Racine Rockwell and a Mrs. Shonda Knox. Now, Mrs. Shonda Knox was incapacitated when we found her, so we did send both women to the hospital. Now, they did test positive for COVID, but they are resting comfortably, and the doc says they're going to be okay. <laughs> Hey, hey, what's wrong? I'm just really proud of you. Oh, and I of you. Hey, okay. got another bottle of tequila. Oh no, 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 <laughs> no. How about some white wine? Champagne? Yeah. Yeah, okay. 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 <laughs> okay. I'll go, I'm gonna run to the strawberry right back, okay? Okay. Yes! 